What's up guys, I'm Tyler Hilton. Welcome to my creator session. I'm stoked to be here and I'm glad that you guys could be here to watch this. A lot of the times my audience are fans of music and people that just love enjoying art and this is a cool opportunity to be kind of talking to people that make the art and make the music and talk some inside baseball on how um, you know the songs came together and kind of what motivated me to get it keep it going and all that so anyway I'll play some songs some stuff off my last record I'm gonna try some new songs um, let's see if I can get through them because I thought I'd take some chances today for you guys and um, you know we'll kind of deconstruct it as we go but thanks for hanging out as you pass in my exit as you drive out of Texas do you think of me think of me This may be one of my favorite creator sessions. Tyler Hilton is an accomplished actor, writer, performer, pretty much all the things. Not gonna lie, I fangirled a little because I did love myself some One Tree Hill. But in all seriousness, I experienced so much joy in talking with Tyler, and I especially enjoyed listening to the wisdom that he has to share from his vast experience as a creator. In this session, Tyler sits with us and talks about everything from using Patreon to better connect with his fans, leveling up, facing some fears about his music, and probably most importantly, his journey to becoming an independent musician after 10 years of feeling pretty stuck. Spoiler alert, he got unstuck, and so much of this creator session is really about how he did just that. gotta be now It's just that I don't wanna turn into nothing And I can't ever get you to say Knowing this will never be something You don't even want anyway The heart has become in the heart How long till I lose you? How long till I lose you? Talk about it now. Imagine the pressure I'm under. Oh, and I can't let you get away. Oh, now when it's all that I wanted, I oh, what's it I for anyway? Not to give in to a hunger. How long till I lose you? How long till I lose you? How long till? Dreams to bury. I 
I can see it all so clearly now It's gonna be our story someday Many roads to wander Many dreams to bury And I can see it all so clearly now and I was swept up and carried away Just hanging on the all that I can't allow Man, it feels so good to play again. It's like this last year uh, I've done less tour dates than I've ever done because I had a kid and I've just been hanging with her and you know everything's just kind of upside down, but um, new tour dates just got booked and I'm playing again. It's like there's something about singing and playing that's like this necessary physical thing for me. And I don't think that's true when I'm not on tour, I'm not singing, and then I start doing it and I'm like, whoa, this is as natural and as necessary as like good food, exercise. There's something about it. Um, like a rush of energy flows through me and I just love it. Anyway, it's cool. I'm glad I got to be here to do this. Um, man, that song was so crazy for me. It's so indicative of how a lot of my songs come together. I do a lot of writing for other people and for projects like film and TV and other artists. And there's a side of me that loves uh, assignment-based art. That's why I'm also an actor, and it's the part of me that loves acting and stuff too. I like putting myself in the, uh, using myself as a tool for another creator, having parameters and creating art within that. That's really exciting to me. However, on the like Tyler Hilton artist side, this shit is so random how it comes, and maybe it's a release from the other side, but it's like I have two different kind of artistic brains. One that loves to serve and work within parameters, and the other one that just does whatever it wants, out on a whim, the songs come quick and they're not thought about. And they're, I think it's like free, I don't know, like free hand doodling or something. Like there's something subconscious about it to me. It's like a dream. So a lot of my songs, um, you know, and I, I don't mean this in any kind of pretentious way because maybe the songs don't come out good all the time either, but a lot of them are so stream of consciousness for me that I learn a lot about myself um, as I keep singing the songs throughout the years because the lyrics are looked at um, that little for my own personal stuff. Um, so it's, it's an exercise for me as well. But that's, that tune is a um, song that's really crazy. It was like, I was in the studio making this last record of mine, City on Fire, with my buddy Jocko Caraco, this guy I've been playing music with since we were young, and um, our families kind of have all been around each other for since we were young. And um, He's a killer guitar player and... Uh, and songwriter and producer, and we've worked together forever, but he and I were kind of working together and we're this, a good friend of ours had just like gotten a divorce and it was crazy because I thought these two were gonna be around forever. They were the first one of us that even got into a relationship and got all serious and the first couple that was sending out Christmas cards and we were young, like, oh damn, that's a straight up couple, you know, like adult style. Um, so they were always kind of like a model for me and then they got divorced or whatever. Not a you know, not the craziest thing ever, but it kind of shook my world enough from his perspective and her perspective that I started writing this song about what must have been going down. And I kept singing this song, How Long Till I Lose You? And I was starting to write these lyrics from his perspective and her perspective as I'm starting to see what's really going on the inside while they're trying to keep up what's going on, on the outside. And the song's coming, it's coming really fast. Um, uh, the lyrics are just about this relationship falling apart. Okay, so I'm writing this song, recording this song as we're writing it, and I get this text that one of my best friends from high school passed away. 
right in the middle of like writing the song. Um, and I don't mean, and I'm not even exaggerating on the timing of this. And uh, I was just totally stunned. This girl was like the fun, one of the funniest people I've ever met and just such a talent. And it was just total unfortunate circumstances and she's gone. Like this crazy presence gone from this world. And here I am like writing this song literally two verses and a chorus in. We're recording the song as we're writing it, super fresh. And it's called, How Long Till I Lose You? And then I get this text. And so, you know, we're just like taking a break and we're just hanging for a bit. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't remember where the bridge came from, but obviously I'm singing the song called, How Long Till I Lose You? And I'm writing it and I'm trying to put it together. And I can't stop thinking about Ashley, this, this friend of mine. And the bridge just kind of, totally changes energy, totally changes vibe. It's like a whole new movement. And it was at that moment that I got that text. When we came back from break, I kept writing the bridge. And now I'm thinking about Ashley, like how long till I lose you? And, you know, all these roads we go down, all these like dreams we have or whatever. And it's like, it's just so crazy, you know? I mean, not to be whatever, but it's literally nothing other than the moment matters. And you need dreams to keep you moving forward so you have direction and all this. But like, you could have dreams right up until the end. My grandma died this a few months ago, the coolest person ever. She was early 90s. She was like, had plans straight through the rest of the year, you know? And then one day you're just taken away. So I was just thinking about this stuff as I was writing this bridge and then launching from that bridge into the last chorus again, How Long Till I Lose You. Anyway, it was a cool song for me and just real indicative of how subconscious thought can just um, form this thing that you didn't think it was gonna be right at the beginning of the song. So let me show you an example of something that like I love to do in a parameter kind of writing way. Uh, I So that song, super personal diary entry kind of thing. There's another song of mine that's probably one of my favorite songs I've written, definitely one of the favorites off the last record called City on Fire. And I named the record after it. At the time, dude, LA was t literally totally on fire. There was fire everywhere. I think we started making this record around 2016. So everything was just, everything was just topsy turvy. And, I got this assignment to um, write some songs for this this new TV show that was going to be like cowboy based and all this stuff. So I love that stuff because unfortunately I'm not brave enough in my own personal art. Also, I don't want to be that like uh, you know directive with my with my own personal art to be like okay today we're going to write just how I work I'm like today we're going to write a song like this. I like to kind of be freer. So I do get excited when I'm like hey, can you write songs like this? Now, some of my favorite kind of music is folk music, old stuff like Woody Guthrie, um, uh, Muddy Waters, uh, that kind of stuff like killed me when I was young. Like it spoke to me, like, I don't know what it was. It just something about it was like, that is me. If there's past lives, if there's other kind of weird stuff. So in me has always been murder ballads, uh, troubadours of the past, those kind of things. I love that stuff. Storytelling through song. So... I took this assignment to write some cowboy songs for the show and just uh, went deep and started writing all kinds of weird stuff. And I was obsessed with it. And some of the stuff I was so obsessed with, I was like, I'm keeping this for my record. And City on Fire is one of them. Because once I started writing this tune, then I was like off. I, I had no idea what I was writing it about, but I was like, I wanted to write a murder ballad. I wanted to have some kind of plot and have some kind of narrative. And uh, I, I just started writing this murder ballad about this like guy who comes into town and... Uh, kidnaps this, this kid and, um, you know, murders this woman, burns the city on fire and like rides out of town. This is not what I planned. This is just as the story's unfolding as I'm writing it is what it's turning up to be. And I'm like riveted as it's coming out, like what's going to happen next. And then I'm kind of writing it from the perspective of, of this like vigilante guy who goes after it, um, after the guy. So rad and like never something that would sit on the edge of my bed and be like, City on fire, like writing about a murder ballad, but it just like spawned me in this direction that was so cool. So um, anyway, this is City on Fire. Well, if you last one who used to stand up to the darkness, born in man, and blindly follow faith into the light. Let the fire burn a lullaby straight to the heart, straight through the night, and tell of teaching man to learn it right. Well, she had promised all to me, a grown woman still yet to be, with eyes as wide as Colorado plains. But souls like hers are far and rare, and don't deserve the world we share, and finally left it peaceful as she came. 
city on fire It's getting away The river's dry The ink been red The wind still blows The spark to flame Don't take the child The city on fire Well, I didn't shed a tear Shed enough by then that year Fertile seeds of vengeance Sprouting like the grain Well, my heart grew dense like ancient wood Choking out the rest of my good Leaving only murder on the brain The city on fire It's getting away The river's dry The ink been rain The wind still blows Spark to flame, don't take the child, the city on fire. Well, fate is just a word until fortune meets a patient will And you find yourself a gun against your neck You've seen my face, he heard me cry And I could see he was scared to die Till I spoke her name to the center of his deck Hey, the city on fire It's getting away The river's dry And the ink been red Winds it blows, the sparks of flame. Don't take the child, the city on fire, the city on fire. Just get away, the river's dry, and they ain't been rain. The winds it blows, the sparks of flame. Don't take the child, the city on fire. So I'm um, leaving this uh, house we're filming in right now. Um, we're going to be moving out. And we're going to be spending more time in Canada and moving up there. Um, and I recorded a lot of cool stuff in this living room, in this house, wrote a lot of these songs in this living room. This is one that I recorded and wrote um, right here in front of the fireplace. Uh, when we first uh, moved into this house, we were living here, my wife and I, with uh, two friends of ours, one in the guest house and one in the house with us, and it was just a blast. We had uh, all of us here all the time, and we're just having a good time. And quiet moments were rare, and I remember everybody was out of the house at one point, and I was in here alone, and this song just poured out like it was just waiting to come out. I'd been kind of like reconciling, like, so I stopped drinking, like, maybe six or seven years ago or something. I'm actually like trying not to keep track of it because I feel like it just makes me feel like I'm holding my breath. It's just like the way my life is so much easier now. And um, my favorite thing in the world is to like party and be social. I just love it, you know? And um, I'm always on tour since I've been like 15 years old. So I've had a blast. But at some point, you guys might find this too in your art. But I didn't know this, but I kind of hit this fork in a road where I was like, uh, I can't do both of these as well as I want to. And I want to keep having the time of my life and like partying and seeing the world and just leaving myself open to just random ass adventure. And that's what's fueling me and that's what's keeping me creative. But I also want to level up on my art. Like I'd got, you know, let's be honest, like a lot of us learn most of the shit we're using in our late teens, early 20s, and we spend the rest of our 20s um, just tapping that knowledge reserve, you know? And how often do we go back to the well and like level up again, you know? We're kind of just running on the fumes of that knowledge we got in our early 20s and we're so stoked that we know that much. You know what I'm saying? And we're like playing jazz with it now. We're like taking the knowledge we learn and trying different things and incorporating our life into it. Cool, cool, cool. But like at a certain point, I was like, oh, you know what? I actually do want to get better. And I think I might want to get better at the expense of potentially being cooler. 
in my brain. You know what I'm saying? Because part of me was like, dude, if you stop drinking, you stop partying, you start going out, life's going to be over. What are you even going to write about? And at some point I was like, no, no, I'm too distracted. I'm not good enough at being like, no, I'm not going to go out. I love it too much. It's so much fun. But if I put myself on time out from it, um, I think I'll create some great art. <laughs> Six or seven years later, life is unrecognizable. Um, got so much better at so many things, not to mention like had so many cool things happen, had a kid. Touring is better. Singing is better. Everything is better. It's just a lot scarier. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, is like before I was trying not to feel the nerves of how fucking scary everything is, you know, but it's just wild, you know, and you're up there on that tightrope, even when you're creating, even when you're not in front of people, like you're just in the studio in front of the mic and there's no other camera, there's no one around and it's just you. That's just as scary as being in front of an audience. And it's easier to do when you're messed up a little, I feel like, you know, but it's harder to do when you have to face it and you kind of like have to feel the fear, but the payoff's better. Dude, life's so annoying that way. It's like broccoli's the stuff that's good for you, not ice cream and the shit that's hard honestly pays off. It's like all the lame lessons are true, but anyway, it's been great. Um, and this is a song, um, I feel sorry for myself every day for not drinking or like every week or so I'll be like, it's a bummer, dude. You don't get to live the life like everyone else. Um, and I spend the rest of the time being like, what was I thinking? I wish I'd done this sooner. Because now my energy, dude, I used to be hungover, sleeping so late, all this stuff. Now I'm like up so early. I've got like a million things going. Like, I love it. Um, but this is one of the song. This is a song I wrote kind of in my moment of like rawness when I was here by myself one night. I don't want to wait till the water runs dry Whiskey in the morning or that long goodbye Any motivation that it takes to breathe Or anyone or anything I think I need and I don't want to be scared like I was before Now I don't want to be hurt by it anymore Lots of preparation for the way I appeared Hot spots sipping on craft Not a bit of letting on of my regret Think I know it all, know nothing yet I don't want to be scared Like I was before Now I don't want to be hurt by it anymore Yeah, I don't want to be scared like I was before Now I don't want to be hurt by it anymore I walk anywhere I stand Anytime I think of trying something else Gonna sing this to remind myself I don't want to be scared Like I was before Now I don't want to be hurt by it No, I don't want to be scared Like I was before 
Cool. So I'm gonna try some stuff on the piano, and um, I've been able to do a lot more piano writing since I've been off the road. And um, part of being off the road uh, was signing onto a Patreon account and trying to. I had this idea of trying to. When I was out on the road, there were clearly some fans that were not just casual music fans and like fans of my music but people who were super invested in like what I was doing next wanted to kind of follow up on what songs were ending up on the cutting room floor asking about b-sides things they heard on YouTube um and I wanted to find a way to use those fans who had such cool opinions of my music and really listen to things in a different way to use their opinion on some of my new record so I had this idea of like doing some monthly concerts on Patreon but also having this studio couch dweller tier where I'm able to post demos at different stages or songs that I'm working on in the studio. And I guess I had the comfort of knowing they couldn't be downloaded or whatever, but they can just stream these demos or different versions that I'm trying and I get people's feedback. Um, super helpful. There is something about probably like, you know, the performer in me that does get amped up a little bit when someone's watching, you know? Um, so bringing some outside eyes into my songwriting studio process was kind of cool um, and made me up my game and want to show off more, you know? And that's kind of like what I was trying to trick myself into like getting. Because there's something on the road where I just turn on a little bit more and I think I sing even better and all this stuff because, you know, I don't know, you want to be cool. You want to be like, you, you want people to like have a good time. You want to there's something competitive about showing that. I don't know, there's just something about it, you know? So having that um, in the studio has been cool. And then I took it even farther. We have another tier where every month I'll have a uh, little Zoom coffee dates with people like I used to on the road. We'd get together for coffee before the shows. And so we'll do little groups of six and we'll get together and talk about all kinds of crazy stuff. Like it's been literally the most social stuff that I've had since I've had the kid and I've just been chilling is these coffees. It's been so fun. Um, anyway, so wild situation and... I kind of wondered too, um, once uh, uh, we had our baby, I was like, I want to do some more records, focus on putting out more records, be on the road less, focus on doing more music for TV and film and stuff. And, um, but I was really, really getting this pit in my stomach about hanging out with the fans and getting this feedback. So I knew there were some of them that I'd be leaving hanging. So Patreon has just filled all those gaps. Um, the most random things that I would never post on Inst on Instagram or anything like that because I'm like, I don't know who's following me on this. It could be my grandma. It could be like some movie producer. It could be fans, you know? With the Patreon stuff, these people are hilarious and they're like, it's inside joke on inside jokes. Like as we're moving out of this house, I um, had all this shit that I was like, what do I do with old cords from the road and stuff? And I was like, I'm going to send a bunch of random junk to all my patrons. So... I put together, like, got all these envelopes and was just dropping, like, you know, picks, old strings, uh, you know, cords from the road. And I was going to feel bad about throwing this stuff away because I was like, that's kind of cool, but I want someone to have it, but I just don't want to move with it. Patrons, man, love them. They're my faves. But anyway, so I, I tried... Uh, on the road, it's a little scarier to try new songs because you're like, I'm going to try this new song. I don't know if it's going to go well, but you definitely know it's going to go well because you practice it. You're probably not just flying totally by the seat of your pants on the road, though I do cross that line quite often. But there is something about these concerts on Patreon where I'm in a room by myself alone, but there's also an audience, but I definitely feel braver about trying stuff and starting stuff over. And so I've tried a lot of these songs for the first time on Patreon. Um, and I'm still not great at playing them. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be whatever, but I haven't gone on the road with these songs. I haven't even finished recording these songs. So I'm gonna play you a couple of things that are really new that I've just kind of been working on in front of the patron folks as like my practice uh, matinee crowd. And uh, I'm gonna play them for you guys as I'm kind of working it out still. But this is a, this is a tune that, I uh, I wrote for me and 
I don't know. I don't really, it, it's it just kind of paints like a picture about going out and meeting a group of friends and wishing that somebody specific was there. You know, that vibe where you go out with a group, but you weren't really going out to hang with the group. You kind of were going out to hang out with one person. And your world is slowly becoming about that one person and hoping that you guys run into each other or whatever it is. I don't know how I got off on this thing, but I was playing this music and it kind of started the story. And it's so funny because even though this story not necessarily didn't exactly happen to me, it's sometimes songs like this play that emotional chord in me stronger than um, anything else. So I know anyway, this, this song really gets me. I don't know what it is. So I hope I can learn to play it well in the future and I'll try it out on you guys. This is called That's the Deal. Oh man, see, I'm feeling like nervous already. And the thing is, I feel like I want to qualify it. But the thing, see, let me just tell you like what I was going for in the song in case I don't pull it off, but I hope I do, is I was kind of like wanted to do this like really mellow, I wanted to do this song that was very, very specific, that focused on something so specific or such a specific night or moment and hopefully talk about something bigger through it. So anyway, that's what I was going for. All right. Friends of ours are making plans for bars, but no one's splitting up. So we're picking cars And somewhere far away I bet your light is on Didn't know you declined Probably wouldn't have come But it's fine I ain't tripping at all Feel, but I kept on wishing You would change your mind Let me out for real Cause I can't stop thinking about you That's the deal Most of the time Everything I do needs an audience and you're the audience yeah. but over time it wasn't suddenly it was only your life I posted for but it's fine I ain't tripping at all said cool girl whatever you feel but I kept on wishing you would change your mind let me out for real cause I can't stop thinking about you that's a deep If you're up to find the time, I'll be out still, probably tonight. I tried to get you downtown. So no, I said, cool girl, whatever you feel, but I.
change your mind Let me out for real But can't stop thinking about you That's a deal I forgot to do that. I want to kind of get that musical part going at the end and in the instrumental. But um, anyway, so that's it. I'm kind of working on it still. But um, in the middle of it, I was like, dude, this is the worst. But I feel like that's what this vibe is. And I wanted to kind of show you guys something that I'm kind of in the process of playing with. Sometimes I find it so hard to figure out what I want to say to close us out because there are so many things that I want to put a big fat exclamation mark behind. This is another one of those where I find myself wanting to reference so many golden nuggets that Tyler shared. But I think one thing that really struck me was the true reverence he has for creatives. I felt especially grateful to him when he said, I feel honored to talk to creators of all kinds. I consider myself lucky to be a part of such a cool, interesting, brave, courageous group of people who are doing things that everyone told them they shouldn't be doing when they were younger, and they're doing it anyway. Without people having the courage to create, this world would be lacking so much beautiful things. Tell us in the comments what your favorite moments, songs, stories, and lessons were from this session. Yeah, I wasn't independent for a while. In fact, I was like put out my first record independent when I was like 15 and I did that for a while. And um, truth be told, I was trying to get signed when I was young for like four or five years and no label would want to sign me. I, they would send me to different um, producers around the country and I would get like, uh, you know, demo deals or something like that and they'd, they'd pay for like a record. But it was a, kind of in this weird in between genre where it was before John Mayer had broke out. I was doing a lot more kind of country and folk stuff. In fact, I started as like a blues guy. Um, and Johnny Lang was kind of doing his thing, but you know, it was like just kind of a weird time. So, um, anyway, this is a random story, but might pertain to some of you guys. Um, I'm going to go off here, but like, so anyway, I was trying to get a record deal, whatever, couldn't get one, had managers and people, lawyers trying to make it happen. And so I graduated high school and I was like, I didn't want to be signed anyway. I don't want to be making this like pop music. I want to be making blues music like Robert Johnson and like Woody Guthrie. And I want to travel around and do that whole thing. So I was like, I'm quitting the music business. I was 18. I just graduated high school. And I was like, I want to go off and I want to be like a hobo, you know, like that's the deal. So I went, went to Europe with my friend. Um, we got all the money we could for round trip tickets and then had no money when we got there. So just... I brought a guitar, we lived on like park benches, all that stuff. Ended up doing really well for places to stay, met a lot of friends and ended up staying in some beautiful places. Um, but you know, it was that hand to mouth like existence that was fun and refreshing and felt so real. And I was so tired of being in conference rooms and boardrooms and it was just such a sterile place to make music. I was so confused. Um, and then as soon as I came back from Europe, uh, there was a record deal waiting for me from Warner Brothers. Dude, life is always like that. It's so weird. It's like relationships or anything else. Like somehow there's this game where it's like, if you act like you don't want it, <laughs> then it's like, so I was like totally moved on and this record deal's here. Well, that was my first record, um, that my first like record that was on the radio and everything, it was called The Tracks of Tyler Hilton. And all those songs, like um, if you listen to the record, like Rolling Home and Glad, a lot of those that were on One Tree Hill when I was first on that show, those were all written in Europe. Um, right before I came back. So it was just crazy that I'd already committed to like doing the whole thing independent and then the record deal came along. And I was with Warner Brothers for and Warner Chapel on the publishing side, which is for songwriting, for 
10 years and it was awesome. You know, I, like I learned so much, uh, it was really, really stifling creatively though, which was the bummer. I mean, I learned a lot about the industry and PR and, um, whatever social media was just kind of getting going then. So like, I just felt like I got on the ground level of a lot of cool stuff, but creatively, man, I ended up in this tunnel of something that I call permission based art. Oh my God. This is the downer. You know, I said like, I like to like write within structure, within structure. That's cool. You know, but the bummer is when you have to get someone's permission to even be making music in the first place, that's what was stifling. So how a lot of record deals are set up is if they don't like the songs that you're putting out or they don't hear a single or whatever, you can't put anything else out. So I didn't put out another record for 10 years. I was making records. I made like three full records. I love these records. They didn't come out because there wasn't the right single at the right time on the right format to support the rest of the album. So the album would just go away, eventually sit on the shelf, get too old, and they'll be like, you know what? Let's find a new producer, let's do a new record. And I'm like, these are my songs, I love these songs. So I was getting into this mode that I would only be writing songs that I was hoping they would think would go on the radio so that they would release the album with all the other songs. And it was awful, every song I'd write, i just send it in an email and be like, is this right? And they'd be like, yeah, it sounds good. Let me listen to it. And then you like wouldn't hear back. And you're like, dude, I'm not here to be writing songs to see if someone else likes it. Like I could see that being someone's vibe. It's just not mine. You know, like I don't have the attention span for it. So I um, was excited to get off Warner Brothers. And when I did, I had like this well of like creativity that I was just dying to get out. I was so tired of being, of hearing, you know, because before I was on Warner Brothers, I was, um, you know, like a folk artist, a blues artist, all this kind of stuff. Uh, when I was on Warner Brothers, you know, got to be this like pop singer songwriter guy. And I'm not faulting anyone with Warner Brothers. Everyone's all trying to make money, and I get it. It's a big operation, but like trying to pigeonhole. And meanwhile, my artistic cre- creativity like knows no bounds, like probably a lot of yours. And if you're you know, and they had me so busy on so many other things. I didn't even have time to do a lot of this stuff. I was trying to do folk stuff, trying to do whatever. They just didn't dig it. So when I left, I was ready to do blues music again, rock music in the way I wanted to, folk music, country music. I was so tired of trying to like get into this pop genre by taking a little elements of this. But then like, we'll just put you with this producer. And then it just sounds like you guys know the deal. You can smell that cheese like a mile away. It's the worst, you know, but people in boardrooms a lot, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it all works. You know what I'm saying? It's, but I didn't want to stick around to figure out how it worked anymore. I was wasting too much of my life trying to like figure out the game, the rules of the game. And I didn't want to play that game. I want to play like a total different game, you know? So I left, started my own label. And that's when I put out Forget the Storm, which ended up being my most popular record. Um, I maybe even so far, uh, and I just did it independently. And it was, had like songs of mine, like Loaded Gun on it and Kicking My Heels. Um, California, I think was on there. Anyway, there's a lot of a lot of songs on there that are songs that I play all the time still that I love. Um, and that just came from this like slingshot of just like trying to get stuff out of me that I hadn't played in a while. And I just kept going on that with every record. I'm exploring new things. The record after that was called Indian Summer. I tried to do the whole thing live with a kind of a folk bluegrass band in the studio at the same time. Um, really cool, like singer songwritery kind of vibe. And then with City on Fire, man. I was in like full on TV and movie music mode, like scoring things with strings and timpani and toms and all this cool stuff. I was seeing things in such a big cinematic way and that's what City on Fire has got all different styles of music on it um, and I wanted to explore all that, dude. If I couldn't have done any of that stuff if I was at the label, you know? Yeah, so I feel like the vibe is let artists put it out. It'll find the audience. You may not know what's good. Let the audience decide. You don't have to put money behind it, but I think it's good for artists to put stuff out. They need to clear the funnel and as I keep clearing the funnel, I think I keep writing better and better songs. I don't know if they're gonna end up on the radio. I'm not sure. I know they're better songs. I just do, you know? And the people who dig what I do, I think we'll think that they're better songs. And there are people that write whatever they were looking for way better than I do. Find those people. This is my lane, and I do this really well, you know? And I think the people that dig it appreciate that. Let me try one more in that vein of scary and new. And uh, I'll kind of leave you with that. But this is, um, I'm just trying to figure out uh, tightening up 
a few of these songs and they're going to be done. Hopefully we'll have it out in the fall. But And I say this about every record, but I really mean this. I think this is my favorite record I've ever done, this new one coming out. I really, I just am like, man. Um, so hopefully we'll just, that'll just keep happening, but all right. All right. Better be gentle out there. That's why I save these till the end. Because if you made it this far, then you're probably not bored, but thanks for sticking with me. All right, so this is called uh, Drive Out of Texas. Right there on the floor. I don't know what's coming up with it as I go. 
You guys, um, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. I feel honored to talk to creators of all kind and um, consider myself lucky to be part of such a cool, interesting, brave, courageous group of people who are doing things that everyone told them they shouldn't be doing when they were younger and they're doing it anyway. Um, you guys are cool. I'm glad I got to talk to you today and uh, can't wait to learn some stuff from you guys as well. Thanks a lot.